No, the real problem is, is, is that there hasn't been a lot of interest among the younger people until, relative, until very recently. Um, and so the ability of anybody to do that in the schools is now gone, unfortunately. Um, yeah, if, if, if it was to be revived in SARC, it would have to be, as it's happened here, really, really from scratch. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do in Alderney too. I mean, 45 years ago, there would have been people who could have done that, but not anymore, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, overtly, yes, they think it's great. They do, absolutely. That's great. Um, um, and yes, and, and we've had, and as I said, there have been some individual successes. Um, uh, um, 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 what tends to happen, though, if a, a learner knows an older person, and quite a few of them have relatives or, or neighbours who, who can speak the language, um, they will go and see them and say, well, I want to practice my genesee with you. And then the older person will rattle something off and the younger person will try to say something, and the older person will say, oh, we don't say it like that. You'll never pronounce it like we do. <laughs> Which is the authenticity issue, the ownership thing. And I think there's a bit of showing off going on, and that's also the case with the kind of uh, recovering um, <coughs> latent speakers. Um, but this is, it's, I, I, I call it this ownership issue, and it's not just in these islands. It's been, I, I, I've been to a couple of conferences recently on, on new speakers and developing new speakers of small languages, minority languages. It tends to happen in quite a lot of places. Um, in a way, you've kind of got over that in the Isle of Man because, as people have been saying to me, everyone who now speaks Manx has gone through the same process of having to learn it from scratch. But um, where there are still native speakers, they tend to view themselves as being superior, even though they didn't pass the language on themselves. <coughs> I, I've heard about the tell that a bit in Jersey, actually, yes. Um, a kind of bit of report, well, um, where um, um, some of the children have been going home and trying to practice their language with their grandparents. And the grandparents say, oh, well, I, I don't speak the proper Jerry that you've been learning at school. Mm. Yes. 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 Yes, the, the festival that I mentioned, the, the festival that the kind of uh, inter-Norman festival, if you like, is going to parallel with the inter-Celtic festival. Um, and there are also twinning activities, yes. But they're, they're all getting older and they're all reducing what they're doing, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but both, both, both are great. Um, I, um, what, one of the things we did as part of our research was to organise uh, an Alpan uh, demonstration lesson in Guernsey. And one of the people there was the politician that I mentioned who started the Language Commission. He was really impressed. And he wants to use Alpan, or let's say a, ver a version of Alpan, um, in, to produce materials for that in Guernsey. Unfortunately, the funding that he had uh, uh, um, uh, uh, kind of found, uh, kind of evaporated um, because of the economic situation. The company was no longer in a position to fund um, and they're reliant on trying to get private funding for that. So that now hasn't really moved forward yet. In terms of immersion, um, I know that's a, a immersion schooling particularly. That's um, a, meth a method that, uh, it's not my phone, um, 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 places like Hawaii, New Zealand have used, for example, in America it's very popular. You do need um, people who are both fluent and able to teach the subjects in the schools for that, and we haven't got those at the moment. Um, and I, again, you know, here, here it's great to have that, but I think, again, the expansion of the school is, is hampered by not having more people who can do that. So I think there's a lot of work to be done before we can get to that stage. But yes, it'd be great to have, you know, a whole environment where people can, can speak the language. Yeah. Um, in the past, the, what the, the, in the past, the language that was used in the parliaments was French rather than the local languages um, because the local languages weren't good enough. Um, one thing I did, an uh, interesting thing I also did was I went around asking people what language they prayed in because other, other language researchers have said, oh, this will be the language that's closest to people's hearts. And people said to me, oh, our language is not good enough for talking to God. Uh, because they, they, weren't, they, weren't, they were seen as really low-status languages, so they weren't good enough for speaking in Parliament. So when they switched from French, they went straight to English, because people don't speak the local languages anymore.
Uh, well, I'm, I tend to be an optimist in this respect because I, I see the kind of efforts that people are making all around the world. Um, I think a, lo a lot of them are going to go, but then again, I think people are going to realise what they're losing, like, like that's happening here. And I think for that reason, it's really important to make the recordings and to learn from what other people are doing in, in, in different parts of the world. I think I said a few a few of the lessons I think that could could be could be learned. Um, I think from, from what what we can learn from the Isle of Man is is effective adult level teaching. I think you, you you've done that a lot better than we have, um, and and the level of support I, th I see for the language, um, um, it's. Uh, um, again, I think you know, the way that attitudes have been turned around here is 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 really great. Um, so effective teaching, um, um, a kind of view, view to the future all, all, all the time. I think, uh, I think schools are not the only answers, but, uh, but having effective teaching in schools is, 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 is an answer as well. So effective future training is really important. And I think, again, this has been addressed to a certain extent here. They are, they are starting to address that in Jersey. They are planning to try to convert a couple of French teachers to Gerier teachers because they, they don't, yeah, but they're not starting doing that yet. They, they, if, they, if that was a real plan, they should have started teaching them Gerier some time ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, in terms of what, what can be learned um, from the other way around, possibly, um, well, the, the, um, the Language Commission in Gandhi started off great in terms of the kind of noises it was making in terms of strategic direction and the things that it felt, felt they needed doing. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it seems to have stalled a bit. But I think um, you know, being very clear about, about where, where you're going is, is very important, um, what, what your aims are and what your goals are. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the other thing that I think is what we can learn from the Isle of Man is, is the importance of having not just lessons, but also um, conversation groups. And I've been to a couple of the conversation groups this week. And again, it's, it's, yeah, it's very impressive what's going on. Absolutely. I think one of the problems in Jersey is they focus on the written word in the lessons and the kids don't know how to pronounce it properly. Um, if you taught the spoken first and then, and then introduce the writing. Um, in, in Guernsey, um, when people try to write Genesier, they tend to write in all kinds of different ways and very um, inconsistently. But if you know the language well enough, you can, you can work out what it is.